Now let's move on to IUPAC naming or the naming of organic compounds, which is termed as IUPAC naming, like I said at first. So when you're given a structure, you have to know how to write the condensed structural formula, the molecular formula, as well as the name that describes what it is, which is what we call the IUPAC name. So over here, there's a specific and very important way that you have to know of naming these organic compounds. You first have to know how many carbon atoms a compound has. That will enable you to write down what compound it is because of the number of carbons you've been given. For instance, if you get so many carbon atoms, it will be this um, compound. Um, or if you get this so many, then it will be that compound and other important stuff. But for now, let's remember how many homologous series we have. And it's nine. And we're going to go through them as well as how to name them. So the number of carbons will tell you what the prefix is. So if a structure has one carbon atom, the prefix will be, will be meth. If it's two carbon atoms, the prefix will be eth. If it's three carbon atoms, the prefix will be prop. If it's four carbon atoms, the prefix will be but. If it's five carbon atoms, the prefix will be pent. If it's six carbon atoms, the prefix will be hex. If it's seven carbon atoms, the prefix will be hept. If it's eight carbon atoms, the prefix will be oct. And this is very important to know. And you have to know this off by heart. Let's go through them one more time. One is meth. Two is f. Three is prop. Four is but. Five is pent. Six is hex. Seven is hept. Eight is oct. Again, I repeat, this is very important. Now, there are three steps I'm going to talk about to have a correct IUPAC name. Now, I'm begging you to please write these steps down when I'm done listing them and watch the video when you've, when you've written them down so you can refer to them. The first point goes, consider the longest chain. I'm still going to dwell on that. Point number two says, consider the functional group. And I put the word specify. And over here, you need to be clear as to which carbon atom you found the functional group. Point number three says, consider the branch. I'm still going to touch on the branch. And here in the brackets, it says specify alphabetical order. And it includes halo alkanes. And when I'm asking you to specify, I need you to specify on which carbon atom you found the branch. And what I mean by alphabetical order is the branch's name. And this will depend on which branch comes first. In alphabetical order, you're still going to get a clear picture of what I'm trying to say, which is why I'm asking you to please write down. So here they gave us a structure, and point number one says, consider the longest chain. Now, a chain is formed by carbon atoms. So over here we have a chain of two carbon atoms, and there's only one chain. And the reason why we say consider the longest chains, or the longest chain, sorry, we do get cases where we have plenty of chains formed by carbon atoms. So in this structure, we only have one chain, a chain of two carbon atoms. Now, it doesn't mean the carbon on the left is carbon number one. Whichever carbon atom could be carbon number one. Now, you'll see which carbon atoms have the potential to be carbon number one as we continue. So the carbon on your left-hand side could be carbon number one, as well as the carbon on the right-hand side could be carbon number one. What I notice about the structure is that 
is that it has two carbon atoms and the prefix for this will be F. Now if you can still remember, two carbon atoms is F. Another thing I notice is that the structure has single bonds, carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms only, which makes it an alkane. So the IUPAC name, we will take the ane out of the word alkane and join it with this F at the end. So the IUPAC name will be ethane and the F will stand for the number of carbons, which is two. And the ane will stand for alkane. So the whole word will be ethane. Okay, so let's look at another structure. So this structure has four carbon atoms. Consider the first point, the longest chain. It's a chain of four carbon atoms. Now where's our carbon number one? Either carbon atoms on the left hand side or the right hand side could be carbon number one. And this depends on you, especially in this case. So I've got four carbon atoms which will make our prefix but. And remember, four carbon atoms is but. And because the structure is alkane, that would mean the IUPAC name will be butane. Now, don't forget that for alkanes, the suffix will be ane, A-N-E. Now, let's look at another structure. But before we go to another structure, we're going to look at branches. And like I said, on the first step of the three steps, consider the longest chain. We do get cases where we have other chains in the structure. The other chains become mere branches. So we have two branches we're going to talk about. There's a branch that has two carbon atoms. And it's known as the ethyl branch. And remember, eth means two. So the ethyl branch is two carbon atoms. We also have a branch that's known as the methyl. And this branch only has one carbon atom. Now remember, one carbon atom is known as meth. And the branch name is written at the beginning of the IUPAC name. And you'll see this as we continue. So every time the branch name is at the beginning of the IUPAC name, and if you refer back to those three steps uh, as I asked you to write down, I did state there that you have to specify the branch. So here's an example. Now, if there's something to notice about the structure is that it's not straight, like the two previous examples. What you should do, what you should do to give the correct IUPAC name is to consider the longest chain. Now, if you want to consider the longest chain, you'll first have to check which carbon atom has the potential to be carbon number one. Now, if you, rem now, if you remember well, I did say the carbon atom on the left-hand side is not necessarily number one. Whichever carbon atom can be number one. But carbon number one is an atom that's not between two carbon atoms. So in this case, the car carbon that I've labeled as A could be carbon number one. The carbon I've labeled, I've labeled as B could be carbon number one. I've labeled as C could be carbon number one too. And this is because they are not in between two carbon atoms. So please don't mind carbon D. So the first point says, consider the longest chain. So if you consider the first longest chain, I'm sorry, the longest chain, I mean, you'll start, you'll start with the carbon atom that has potential to be carbon number one. So let me start from A to C. So if I start from A, I'll make a right turn at D and go to C. And that will give me three carbon atoms. And now if I start from A to B, and that will be a straight travel, no turns, which will give me four atoms. Now let me start from C to B. 
and I'll take a turn at D, a turn at D to B, and this will give me four carbon atoms, which will which would mean the longest chain consists of four carbon atoms. And four carbon atoms, if you still remember, is but Between C to B and A to B, it would be wise to choose the chain that goes from A to B because it's straight, then choosing a chain with turns, unless you have to. So we are going to pick the chain from A to B. So carbon atom C will be left out, and it will now be a branch because it's been left out. So I'm done considering the longest chain, and let me head on to point number two. And point number two says consider the functional group. So what is the functional group for this structure? It's a single bond. So are we able to point out the functional group? So are we able to point out the single bond? And the answer is no, because the functional group is all over this alkane structure. And therefore, point number two is invalid for the structure. So we jump to point number three. And point number three says, consider the branch. So what this point would simply mean is start on the side that's easier to find the branch so start counting on the side that's easier to find the branch. So let me start at carbon B to see which carbon atom I'll find the branch at. So if I start at B, I'll find it at carbon number three or carbon D. However, if I start it on at carbon A, I'll find it on the second carbon of counting, yeah, which is carbon D. So the easier side is A, so I'll have to start at label A, or carbon A. Because the third point says start on the easier side to find the branch. So we'll count 1, 2, 3, 4. And on, and on carbon number 2, I find the branch. And we'll check how many atoms the branch contains. And it's only one carbon atom, so it's a methyl branch. Now, I'm not sure if you understand this. So what is the IUPAC name? Now, if you can remember, we we're asked to specify the branch on the third point. And since I found it on carbon number two, so the IUPAC name will be 2-methyl, which will mean on carbon number two, I found methyl or one carbon. Remember I said the branch name is at the very beginning of the word. So on carbon number two, I found methyl on a butane structure. And just like that, you're done.